Once we do this, there's no going back. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever told me those words in that order.
I know. I'm trying to think. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? Killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Go ahead.
It is my job to keep two eyes on my town. I am the steward of this place, and this is my watch post. I'm trying to remember 25 years, 26. When you get to my age, the years just rush by. You stop counting altogether. I remember looking out this window and seeing the veils spread out from horizon to horizon. We were a sprawling town. We were booming. Times change, people change, but the veil will always be here. Spacer's choice will always be here. Our work won't ever end. I take comfort in that. This is a Spacer's Choice town. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. The company keeps us warm, keeps us fed, keeps us working. Loyalty's got nothing to do with it, friend. This is good old-fashioned gratitude. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Yes, as a matter of fact. When I stand at my window and look out over my town, here's what I see. I see decent, loyal, hard-working people. I see a family. We are all part of the Spacer's Choice family. We are all doing what we were brought into this world to do. Go ahead. Can we not? Talking about unpleasant things always gets my bile up. That I cannot say. There was no moment when the plagues began. Disease always lurks on the fringes of society, waiting to infect the idle and the lethargic. But in the last ten years, the plagues have become progressively worse and increasingly frequent. Corporate doesn't like us using the word should. It encourages the imagination. I believe plague is a test. It is a test of our loyalty and our fortitude, and it is one we will see through to the end. Show up to work, put in your hours, wear a smile. Problems of the body come from problems of the spirit. Work improves the spirit and fortifies the body. And where do you suggest we find this magical panacea? Can we pan for medicine in the stream? Medicine is a rare and precious commodity. If you demonstrate you have earned the right to be treated, you will be treated. Otherwise, you must heal yourself. If I had enough medicine to treat everyone who fell sick, I would, but I don't. I can't save everyone. So I have to choose. Yes, it is. And it's necessary. Spacer's choice is a family. And the survival of the family is more important than the survival of the individual. I appreciate what you've done for us. Dead? I don't understand. How? Did it come to violence somehow? Rebuilding the town will be difficult without her. But I will mend fences with the other deserters. We will find a way to carry on. We are in your debt. I am authorizing you for a discount on all official Spacer's Choice products, courtesy of the people of Edgewater. By all means. Her son got sick with plague a couple years back. The company never gave us enough medication to treat the whole town. So I had to choose, you see. Adelaide's child, or someone else's. She's never forgiven me. I don't expect she ever will.
Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Oh, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine, I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Uh, 
Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Based on my initial calculations of Dr. Wells' personality, that seems highly unlikely. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty, and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. 
When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Captain? Or will we? Haha. <laughs> Just a little joke for you. Is it time for your regular daily period of unconsciousness? from Dr. Wells. He'd like to congratulate you on finding a route to Monarch. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cull Kelly. Yes, Captain. Initiating travel sequence to the Groundbreaker. Destination reached. The Groundbreaker.
Hey, Captain. I'm in space. I never thought I'd be able to say that. That's not the point. This hack would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss. Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. Not stuck, per se. You could always throw yourself out the airlock. Of course, then you'd find yourself with an exciting new problem. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell. This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. Not gonna lie. You're in a pickle. But uh, Udom's an uh, interesting guy. Might be y'all could come to accords if you play your cards right. Huh. Records show this ain't the first time your ship's been impounded. Seems to get cleared up pretty quick. You might not be in this pickle for long. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Now, hold on. It'll just take a minute. Wanda Dorset over in sickbay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Of course. What am I to you but the guy who's got his eye on your ship? Is there anything else I can help you with? Be seeing you. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Mono. It's a place like you're hearing things. No, seriously. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. A hard cider for a hard life. Ooh, can we rent an upstairs room? Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven, just like store-bought. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key, and they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Laws. Maybe I should charge you double. 
Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... more of flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Edna didn't seem to think so, and I trust the dear girl's judgment. Well, maybe not in men, but she knows her comms. So, like as not, someone's been down there recently. And if someone set up shop in Roseway, I'd wager they got something to hide. I appreciate a man who knows one when he hears it. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Neither do mine, dearie. Old Gladys knows the value of good work. You'll be compensated accordingly, I can promise you that. Should you find yourself responding to a certain distress call, and in so doing find yourself in possession of certain valuable corporate secrets, well, then we ought to have a chat over a pot of tea and my famous cookies. We don't all have the stomach for skullduggery. I understand. Be a dear and come see me again if you change your mind. Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Gracious, I was just sitting down for tea. What do you want then? My hard-earned wisdom? That's right, dearie. Oh. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, looking for ways to bring us to heel. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, sir. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. Chief June Lay Tennyson. Used to be she was chief engineer before her mama passed, and she took the helm. She's neck deep in the ship guts by day, slap fighting with the board by night. Bit straight-laced for my tastes, but that's just her nature. She's fierce, too. A fighter. And between you and me, I think the fight's starting to wear on her. This heat problem we've got's gone unfixed for weeks. Can't say I know what the holdup is, but I'm sure she's trying her best. You've got an engineer flying this ship, ma'am? Wow. I'd sure like to meet her. Surely do. She's quite capable, our Miss Junley. Head on over to engineering if you want to find her. Go right ahead, sweetheart. Groundbreakers radiators. Been neither fine nor dandy for weeks now. 
Miss Junley's supposed to be getting them fixed, but the board's determined to get in her way. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, looking for ways to bring us to heel. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, sir. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. Oh, a little of this, a little of that. I buy and sell items that require discretion to dispose of. Knickknacks. Curios. I also knit throw pillows stuffed with the hair of famous tossball players. But that's more of a passion project. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. That's half the reason I make them, my dear. But that's not what you wanted to talk about, is it, dear? Ask the common folk, and they'll tell you it's on account of all the monsters on Monarch desperate to gobble you up. Because that's what the board tells them, you see. I think they made some fool mistake that would make them look bad to the rest of the colony, and they're trying to hide the evidence. Those board folk are real prideful-like. Never want you looking behind the curtain, lest you see their derrieres. But old Gladys knows the score. The whole colony's not much more than a diorama, showcasing one board screw-up after another. That's why we gotta keep them from getting their grubby mitts on Groundbreaker. She's our mess. Probably. Every once in a while, we get these snippets of radio chatter. Edna shows them to me. Some man hooting and hollering about the light in us all. Claims he's transmitting from Monarch. But who knows if that's true. Might be true. Might be some new trick from the board. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. It's almost... Yes, dearie? Law bless your atoms. Here's a copy of the SOS recording complete with the coordinates. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Great law! Straight to the... Anytime, sweetheart. If you're here... I've got a lovely little throw pillow. Just something I toss together. Like to keep my hands busy.
cradle. Take that. Shouldn't. Any time. Gracious. Any time. on news. We interrupt a regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Do you have what it takes to defend your corporate township from the dangers of alien wildlife and the unemployed? Talk to your local manager about applying for military training and let you know protecting our wonderful brands and products. Military service does not guarantee
Do you know what's happening on Terra One? Last I heard, the board was in dispute with the Renegade Company. Sounded dire. They call it Monarch now. It's supposed to be a real hell.